Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. I'm really grateful, so very grateful you're on this journey with me. Who else is going to understand this journey, this path, this the struggles and the good that comes of it? And who else is going to know just how um, challenging this narrow road can be? But I'm so very grateful that you're here. And I wanted to talk about the parable of the prodigal son today because I've noticed that recently I've noticed that people are walking away from the Torah community and speaking against it and um, you know in a lot of ways I think that they don't have a true understanding of the relationship they've looked at the religiosity of it that people bring in a religiousness to it rather than showing the true basura of the relationship the covenant the love agreement, this beautiful relationship that we get to see in the parable of the prodigal son. And it's interesting to me because the things that I've heard people say about why they leave this community is always has to do with the people that were in leadership that they became disillusioned with. And some maybe went way too uh, into the Jewish mysticism. Some people went to... Uh, you know, did things that they, they were in the leadership and they were doing things that were, you know, not very righteous. And so it seems very hypocritical. I just don't think that you can throw away a relationship with our creator just because people are flawed. Everybody has these flaws and that we look to people as the righteous example rather than looking to our Messiah as the righteous example. Why are we holding people up on a pedestal rather than our Messiah who showed the perfect example? So people are flawed. We have a lot to repent for, and especially if we're in leadership positions and, you know, trying to represent a righteousness and being hypocritical. So there's a lot of repentance that needs to happen. But people become very disillusioned with this walk because one, you know, they, they see people who get very much into this religiosity and this, you know, hyper strictness, and there's no mercy, and then people get into the hyper mercy, and, you know, there's no set standard for righteousness, and we're told to worship in spirit and in truth, and I don't want anyone, you know, our Messiah went after the lost, and it was about the one lost. It wasn't about the 99 who were righteous and saved. It was about the one lost, to me, that's really important. If I can reach the one and say, look, this is a relationship. Don't get disillusioned by people. Don't just get bogged down by the religiosity that people bring into it. Our creator said that, you know, pure and faultless religion is to help the widows and orphans in their time of need and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And the world does religion. There's lots of denominations and you could even, you know, call it demon nations, denominations or demon nations, because everybody is doing their own version of righteousness. Many rejecting our creator completely and claiming to be righteous. No one gets into the door. No one comes into the kingdom if it's not through the gate and the door of our Messiah. So those people aren't even in. They're not even in, and yet they're trying to show a, a side of religion, and it has no value, it has no strength, it has no power, because it's not, you know, our, the high priest hasn't anointed them with the Ruach HaKodesh to be able to walk this out in spirited truth, because they reject our Messiah. And then we claim that that's the way to walk when they study mysticism and you know, all kinds of religious practices that are questionable. So, and then on the other side, we have hyper grace and hyper mercy, you know, people who claim that the Torah has been done away with and, and there's, you know, it's lawless. And so our Messiah says that, you know, these people do all these kind of great works. They cast out demons and they prophesy in his name and he, he's going to say, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So there's a, there's a balance there, but I think people get disillusioned because they think they'll never be good enough. They can never measure up. And I don't want anyone to feel that way. So we cannot let people kill, steal, and destroy 
the basora of the good news, the seed of the word that the Ruach HaKodesh grows within us to bring life and health to every cell and molecule of our beings. We cannot, you know, don't quench the Ruach. Don't quench that and understand that this is a relationship and you are good enough. And we're going to see from the parable of the prodigal son. You know, this son did a lot of bad things. He did a lot of terrible things, but we're going to see the love of the father. And, you know, the love of this father for his son in returning home. And this is what I want people to understand. Anyone who's walking in this path, understand that we grow in this journey. We, we are not perfect when we come in. He accepts us as we are. And then he says, enter into this covenant, this relationship with me. And now you change your ways. Now you change who, who you've been. You have to let go of those worldly things. And, you know, and that is completely a journey in understanding what he wants from us. And we grow in this love relationship and we have to put off those old sinful ways. We can't keep walking in the ways of the world. That's why it's a narrow road. It can be difficult. To give up those things that we valued in the past. But this is such a powerful, powerful thing that restoration comes into the body, into the mind, into the inner being. You know, we expect the favor and the barakah upon our lives. We expect the blessings in our lives. A lot of people expect the blessings without wanting to do anything on their part, without changing their ways and our... You know, our creator said he offers, he sets before us this day, every single day there's this offering. What are you going to choose? Choose ye this day whom you shall serve. He sets before us life or death, favor or curses. Choose life. So this is an everyday offer that we just, we have to show up for every single day. Let our desire be his desire. Let our will be his will. And put off the, you know, perishable things and put on the imperishable. And so people leaving the Torah community, it's because they're looking to other people to show them the path. They're looking at other people's example of what righteousness is. And it's always people that will fail us. People fail us, but Yahuwah and our Messiah never will. And this is why the relationship is so important. Go to Yahuwah. Don't allow serpents in the garden to kill, steal, and destroy the very good, loving relationship between us and our Creator. Don't allow that serpent in the garden. Don't allow that seed of the Word to be stolen and to be trampled underfoot and to be choked out by weeds and the cares of this world. Don't allow anything to destroy your belief of how much you're loved. Of how important you are. Who speaks these things into your life? Who gets to speak anything? Who gets to tell you you're not good enough? Who? Why do we allow anyone to speak harm over our lives when we have the word to tell us what our creator thinks of us? You are so important. You are never going to give up because it's those who endure until the end that shall be saved. And so Yahuwah doesn't give up on us if we don't give up on him. We're the ones who walk away. He, as we see in the parable, we'll see in this parable, he's waiting with open arms for his children to come home. He's just waiting. It's the one lost and they rejoice over the one lost rather than the 99 that are already righteous in their own ways. You know, it's like never give up, brethren. Don't give up. You're loved. You have a purpose. This is an important time for you who is people to not let the seeds of, you know, discord and, and frustration and anger and, and looking at other people as the righteous example of this walk. Why are people the example and not our Messiah? And, you know, rejecting the Messiah, well, we'll never get in, never get into that door because it's his blood that covers us of all those sins and transgressions. It heals us. And I think this is something I haven't heard many people talk about. The blood of our Messiah, it actually, you know, can heal our cells and molecules. It can switch off the, that genetic predisposition for curses in our lives. Not only covering the cells and molecules of our body, 
but the actual, you know, our lives in general, because once we're in Abba's house, we're now under his protection, his covering, you know, his sovereignty. And so when we're under his sovereignty, we're, we're not under the harmful things that are in the world. The, the worldly things can't harm us. So we're building this spiritual house. We're building a spiritual house. And this is the protection we need in these days because it's going to get rough. And if people don't build their house correctly upon the rock and not be swayed by every wind of doctrine, they're going to be blown down and destroyed. And that's the thing that I keep bringing forward we have to be signed, sealed, and delivered into Yahuwah's hands through the blood of our Messiah so that, you know, when the thief tries to come and plunder our house, that he can't get in. He's locked out and we're firmly established in the word. And this is why I think people walk away because they're not firmly established. They don't understand the relationship rather than watching everybody's you know, lawlessness and expecting them to be the righteous example. Let our Messiah be the righteous example of how we should walk this out. And if you have any struggles with this journey, if you're questioning whether this is right for you, reach out to me and, you know, understand that you are so important to Yahuwah's purpose and plan that we need everyone to be on board and to understand their journey and how important they are. Never give up, brethren. Never, never, never. Reach out if you need some help. Um, I'm going to read Matith Yahu, uh, beginning, ver- it's Matith Yahu, Matthew 7, starting at verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy and broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Now why is it so hard? Because we have to give up the worldly things, as we'll see in the parable of the prodigal son, giving up the things that we think are important in the world, don't they pale in comparison to what we'll receive in the eternal it's the people who truly are willing to give up those things so that we can put on the imperishable and live eternally put off the fleshly you know kind of carnal ways and so that can be hard for people to give up those things continuing beware of false prophets they're everywhere they're in torah they're in they're in Christianity, they're in Judaism, they're, they're everywhere. It's everywhere. So you have to always seek his wisdom. Always go to the source. Don't go to people as a righteous example unless you know someone and trust them very much. You will recognize them by their fruits. And so do we know what the fruits are? It's love, peace, patience, joy kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control mercy compassion humility all those things need to be evident are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles so every healthy tree bears good fruit but the diseased tree bears bad fruit a healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. This is how we recognize those who are truly Yahuwahs. They grow in the spiritual maturity and fruitfulness, still obedient to the Torah in spirit and truth. Continuing, not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, will enter the kingdom of Shamaim, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in the Shamaim. On that day, many will say to me, Master, Master, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So this is very important because... Oftentimes people do all these types of works and they cast out demons and they, you know, claim to call on the name and they do try to do many mighty works, but they're, they're lawless and they're still part of the world. They don't, 
fully come into the house of Yahuwah under his covenant, his love agreement, his Torah, which are his house rules. So you don't come in, you don't get to come in unless you agree to the rules, which tell us how to love him, obey him, and love one another and stay unpolluted from the world. So he, he his instructions tell us how to stay out of the worldly things. And these people who are doing these mighty things, Yahushua is going to tell them, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You wanted to keep your feet in the world. You wanted to keep, you know, fornicating with the worldly things. And so, you know, it's the lukewarm people. Um, and we know what happens to the lukewarm. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell. And great, great was the fall of it. Brethren, I have been, I guess, warning or speaking about this for a while now, about how we have to be signed, sealed, and delivered into the hands of our Creator to be protected from the days ahead. You know, when, when will that day come? It comes like a thief in the night. No one knows when it'll hit someone's house. You never know when that house will be plundered. So if we're not under His covering, His protection, his, you know, love agreement that if we do these things, he will do these things for us. There's an agreement, a love agreement that we enter into to be in his house, to be in his protection. And we have to be in this pl this spiritual place. This is our Noah's Ark. This is our protection. This is our secret place. This is the inner room. This is the Kodesh of the Kodesh place. And this is being on top of the mountain. And I've been saying it and I'm going to continue to say it. You must be signed, sealed, and delivered for the day of redemption. And to be protected. Revelation 9, 4. They were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the ones who do not have the seal of Yahuwah on their foreheads. And so, you know, we wonder, what is this seal? Do we really know what this seal is? All right, so let's talk about it. I've talked about it before, but let's talk about it again. Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve the Ruach HaKodesh of Yahuwah, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So this means that we can't, we can't enter the kingdom and we have no protection without going through our Messiah and being anointed with the Ruach HaKodesh sealed for the day of redemption. This means we have the presence of Yahuwah within us. We have our Messiah within us as the vine growing and through the Ruach HaKodesh and the power thereof, we are able to grow these good fr spiritual fruits, this maturity within us. Ephesians 1.13, in him you also, after listening to the message of truth, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Ruach HaKodesh of promise, who is given as a pledge of inheritance with a view to the redemption of Yahuwah's own possession, to the praise of his esteem. So our seal is the Ruach HaKodesh. Yashiyahu 2620, go, my people, enter your rooms and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves a little while until the wrath has passed. For behold, Yahuwah is coming out of his dwelling to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will reveal her bloodshed and will no longer conceal her slain. You don't have to be a prophet to know, to read scripture and see that there's a, there's things coming, that there's a lot of technology that's been put in place, the prince of the power of the air. They're, they're trying to, you know, destroy what Yahuwah has created. And also, if you look at it, the dark matter and things like that, well, our brains have what they call dark matter. All they have to do is, is cause confusion and destruction of the brain. And then they remove the Ark of the Covenant, which is the seal of in our foreheads of his Torah that we're supposed to meditate on day and night. If, if the brain gets damaged through this technology and different things, and then we can't feel the presence of our Creator, and then we don't think that we have to abide in his instructions. See, they've done so many things with technology that we need his seal and protection 
to protect us from these things. And he says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So we have to understand if we're not in his house, we're out in the elements, we're subject to all those destructive forces. This is true protection if we're in his house and covering. So the signs, of course, the sign of Yahuwah are his Sabbaths. And we're to keep his Sabbaths because he says that, that if we keep his Sabbaths, you know, he, this is a sign between him and his people. And Exodus 31, 16, the Israelites must keep the Sabbath, celebrating it as a permanent covenant for the generations to come. It is a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days, Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth. But on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And we know there are Sabbaths within the Moedim, so we have to be signed, sealed, and delivered by the blood of our Messiah into the hands of Yahuwah, into his house, into the secret place. I'm going to keep saying this because I don't want anyone's house to be plundered. I don't want the, the evil one to kill, steal, and destroy what Yahuwah, you know, has reestablished through his son. You know, our Messiah said, I came to give you this life and give it more abundantly. And so we really have to be protected in the hands of our creator. So we're going to talk about the parable of the prodigal son. Talk about how important you are, how important, how much he loves you. And in Luke 7, 47, it says, therefore, I tell you, because the, he's talking about the woman who was a very sinful woman because her many sins have been forgiven she has loved much but he who has been forgiven little loves little and then yahushua said to her your sins are forgiven you by her very belief her sins are forgiven now go and sin no more lest more shall come this is something we have to understand we have to put off the sins repent of them forgive others and continually wash our robes clean every day. This is an everyday thing to get into his presence, to be protected, to continually do his will on this earth. But I don't want anyone to think they aren't important. You are so important and so cherished by him. So let's get into the parable of the prodigal son and just see the kind of loving father we have that's not this misrepresented, evil, wicked taskmaster in the heavens overlooking everyone and allowing them to suffer we suffer because the scripture says because we have forsaken his law he will he will forget our children he will forsake our children because we have forsaken his law we're not in his house or his covering we choose that he sets before us these favors this this barakah upon our lives or the curses and he says please choose me but i'm not going to force you to do it and you won't receive the favor. And so we see on this earth all the curses that are happening and people not realizing they're under these curses and generational curses. And they have to be repented of and get back into loving covenant with our creator. A loving commitment relationship. And to enter the house, we have to agree to the house rules. No one's going to be lawless in Abba's house. It doesn't happen. Every good house, every good home has rules. Why should it be any different for the eternal realm? So that we will learn how to treat Yahuwah with respect, reverence, honor, respect, and learn how to love one another and put away all this darkness. Darkness and all that negative energy, all the harmful frequency is not going in because it, Yahuwah says there's a highway for the remnant of his people and evil does not walk on that path. It can't go that way. So the more that we grow in fruitfulness, the evil ones can't even touch us because we're walking the highway. We're on the highway, you know, heading to, heading back home. And the place we need to be is on top of that mountain. And um, so let's, let's get into the parable of the prodigal son and see just how loved you are. I want to show you the parable of the prodigal son and show you a side of Yahuwah that a lot of times isn't represented and to think that our messiah loves us so much that he came and died for us that he would lay down his life for us that our not just our sins our sins yes but it causes curses within the body it causes disease it causes the affliction of, of children 
And so many children suffering, so many people suffering in their minds, the outer darkness, the weeping and gnashing of teeth. So many people suffer needlessly because they don't understand how to be restored into the right relationship. So I'm hoping this will help a little bit. I'm praying that you will never let anyone, the false ones or the people who are supposed to represent the community, that you never let the serpent come in and kill, steal, and destroy your relationship with Yahuwah through our Messiah. I pray that you will be strong and just understand how much you're loved, how important you are, how he created you for a purpose. Who speaks? Who speaks life over you? He does. He speaks life into you. He gives us the neshama and, you know, the ruach hakodesh, the breath of life. And breathes in us a new life and I just want people to know how important you are don't give up to to all the the ways that people are representing that we feel like is wrong or they're telling us we're not good enough or we're not right we're I don't know what it what are the struggles people go through it's it's a challenge it's a narrow road and I don't want anyone to turn away because of people because there was somebody who didn't represent it right. There was somebody who didn't give, you know, an encouragement along the way, a drink of water along the way. Reach out to me if you need encouragement, if you need some help along the way, because this is how we endure. We come together, we run this race together, and this is how we will endure until the end. So you are so important. You are so important to Yahuwah, to our Messiah to die for you to be able to reconcile us back and to heal our wounds to you know take away all of our our burdens and pain and sin so let me let me get on with this study here of the i'm going to read all of chapter 15 so it'll be a little bit more than just the prodigal son but let's read it all now the tax collectors and notorious Wicked sinners were all coming near to Yahushua to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes kept muttering and indignantly complaining, saying, This man accepts and receives and welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, if he has a hundred sheep and should lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his own shoulders, rejoicing. And when he gets home, he summons together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep which was lost. Look how happy he is. Thus I tell you, there will be more joy in the Shamaim over one wicked person who repents, that is, who changes his mind, abhorring his errors and misdeeds his transgressions and sins, and determines to enter upon a better course of life than over the 99 righteous persons who have no need of repentance. So there's joy over one person who turns and repents than over the 99 who have no need of repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, each one equal to a day's wages if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and look carefully and diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she summons her women friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the silver coin which I had lost. That's what we want. Even if we're finding the one, the one, the righteous, all right, you're good. We've got to find the one. Even so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the messengers of Yahuwah over one especially wicked person who repents, who changes their mind for the better, heartily amending their ways with abhorrence of their past sins. And he said, There was a certain man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the part of the property that falls to me. And the father divided the livelihood between them, the two sons. And not many days after that, the younger son gathered up all that he had and journeyed into a distant country. And there he wasted his fortune in reckless and loose from restraint living. 
And when he had spent all he had, a mighty famine came upon that country, and he began to fall behind and be in want. So we have to realize, you know, Yahuwah gives us things. A lot of times when we're worldly and we're in the world, we make money. We, we you know, have wealth or we have money. And this, this son, he wasted his fortune with reckless and loose restraint living. So, you know, most people who we all come from that place in the world, we were all prodigal, have done those very same things. And when he had spent all he had, like I said, I think I read this, a mighty famine came upon the country and he began to fall behind and be in want. So he went and forced himself upon one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed hogs. Now this is a very dirty job for a Hebrew man or boy. And so this had to be very degrading. So he has no money. He has nothing. He, he's fallen into a bad situation. And a lot of us see that this is what happens when we're out in the world. Yahuwah allows these things to happen to us to draw us back home, to see we need provision, to see we need protections, to see we need his help. And so this, this guy is going through some bad times. He's lived it up. He had a good party, party life. And now he's fallen on hard times and he's doing one of the most degrading jobs a Hebrew boy could do. And he would gladly have fed on and filled his belly with the carob pods that the hogs were eating, but they could not satisfy his hunger and no one gave him anything better. Then when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have enough food to spare, but I am perishing, dying here of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me as one of your hired servants. So see, he sees the error of his ways. He decided his father's house in the beginning wasn't good enough. He wanted to go check out the world, be prodigal, get out of the covering and protection of his father's house. And he was subject to all the different things that, you know, famine and things that come when uh, you're not under the protection of the father's house. So this tells us a very important lesson of why things happen to us out in the world when we're not under the safety and covering of Abba's house. So I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me as one of your hired servants. So he got up and came to his own father. But while he was still a long way off, now look at this, his father saw him and was moved with pity and tenderness for him. And he ran and embraced him and kissed him tenderly. So, is this an angry, evil father? This father has been watching for his son, just like our Heavenly Father is watching and looking and waiting for us to return home. This is his heart, brethren. This is Yahuwah's heart is for his children to be in his house. Because when we're in his house, we're under his covering and protection. And we come in through our Messiah. And anyone who tries to come in a different way they won't be going into the house. There's no other way but through the Messiah. And there are many people who reject our Messiah that claim to be in his house, and they are not. No one gets in but through the Son and being born from above and sealed by the Ruach. And the Son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your Son. I no longer deserve to be recognized as a son of yours. Do you see how humble and contrite? Do you see how the heart changed? He, he got to recognize his conscience bore witness of his sins and he confessed it. Now, confession, confession to the Father is so important. And even our Messiah said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in the heavens, Kodesh be thy name, Yahuwah. So even our Messiah said to pray to the Father. When you pray, pray like this. 
So we have to confess these sins. We have to, you know, our high priest, our Messiah, he makes atonement for our sins so we can enter into the presence of the Father, so we can be cleansed by our Messiah's blood and, the, and our repentance and forgiving others. Very important that we confess. We have to confess and turn away, teshuva, turn away from the worldly things that we've done. Really have a heart change. But the father said to his bondservants, bring quickly the best robe, the festive honor robe, and put it on him and give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet. So look at what Abba does. He has open arms for his children. He's waiting for you to come home. Does this look like some sort of evil, wicked taskmaster? This is a loving father wanting his children to come home so he can protect us, so he can love us, so we can be in relationship. And, you know, in his house, he has rules. Is that such a bad thing to have rules that show us how to love him and love one another? That his children would actually be good to one another? That we would learn how to get along as brothers and sisters because we're going to live eternally together. So he gave him a robe, which means he's cleaning him up. He's putting a fresh, clean robe on him. He's making him clean in his sight. Before he comes into the house, he's got to put on the right garment, clean. That means we repent and forgive others and turn away from our sins. And so he gave him a ring for his hand. Now this is very special. A ring is signifies a relationship. It means that I, you know, that the son here is in agreement with the father and he gives him a ring to show this agreement. And just like we wear zitzits and you know, that's a agree- agreement of the covenant of the commandments that we would grow in Torah just like a little child. See, we're supposed to come in like a little child because we're now born from above. Now we're like little children and we're entering in and we have to grow like a little seed and grow. And, you know, Yahuwah protects us and puts a hedge of protection around us as we guard his commands and instructions and we grow in his Torah and spirit and truth. As the Ruach guides us and teaches us as we grow into mature, fruitful adults, spiritually. So this ring is means that this is an agreement between father and son, between father and child. That they agree to be one together, a one family, under one roof, under one order, under one, in, you know, the instructions. Um, that there's an agreement here and sandals for his feet. So he had to take off the old shoes of the world, the dirty, filthy way he was walking, and be given new, clean sandals to walk in the way that Yahuwah wants him to walk, or his father. So we have to walk the way Yahuwah wants us to walk. We have to go in the direction Yahuwah wants us to go. Our desire has to be his desire. Our will has to be his will. We have to desire what he wants, and then he will guide us in the way. And, and, you know, when we have humble hearts before him, he will lead us in the way everlasting. And so we get these new sandals, these fl- fresh, clean sandals, the shoes of the message of Shalom. We get to bring this besora of good news, of restoration into the house, this joyful, joyful time. And look what happens now. The father says, and bring out that wheat fatted calf and kill it. And let's revel and feast and be happy and merry. See, like we read before, the joy that happens in the heavens when one person repents, one person changes their wickedness or desires to change and turn away from the the ways of the world and turn back to the Father's ways is a restoration down to the very cellular nature that we actually change and transform. We no longer... You know, the more we walk in this, we no longer desire those things. It's the things of the world have no hold on us because we die to that. We die to those things of the world and we live under righteousness. So they're feasting. They're having a great time because it is a great time to say, you know what, son, you've repented. 
We are washing this clean. Your slate's clean. Do you see? You are, he's not perfect yet, but he's come home with a perfect heart. The son has come home with a perfect heart to please his father, and they're going to grow in their relationship. They're going to rebuild this thing. They're going to build this bridge from both sides instead of, you know, the son wanting to always leave and go do the worldly things. So now they're going to build this relationship like we build a relationship with our creator. This is a loving relationship. It's a commitment that we will walk in his way. We will cleanse our garments. We will do things his way. We will obey his instructions because they are good and they keep us healthy. And then favor is upon us instead of the curses of being out in the world and the destruction that comes from being out in the world and not being under the protection of the covering. And so this is Noah's ark. This is our ark. This is our place of protection, the secret place, the Kodesh of the Kodesh place on top of the mountain. This is all that, the spiritual arc of protection that we have to be building now so that we will not be blown over. You know, it, nothing will come at us that will make our house blow down because we're firmly founded upon the rock, this relationship and the instructions. All right, so they were having this feast, but it, the older son was in the field. And as he returned and came near the house, he heard music and dancing. And having called one of the servant boys to him, he began to ask, What does this mean? And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the wheat fattened calf because he has received him safe and well. The elder brother was angry. Remember, we talked about this anger. It doesn't serve Yahuwah's kingdom, it serves darkness. It's of of the you know it's like Cain you know will you not be accepted if you do well but Cain was jealous and angry with his brother and this elder brother was angry and jealous with deep-seated wrath and resolved not to go in so this is a very poor attitude that we see that you know new ones come in and, and maybe there's jealousy or strife or all this stuff and this just has no place in the kingdom it, any kind of darkness you know this lower level frequency darkness stuff won't be going into the kingdom because it's not the love that Yahuwah wants us to have and, you know the fruit of the ruach is what we're supposed to be expressing toward one another and this is why we're supposed to love Yahuwah obey him and love one another that's going into the kingdom so the older brother was angry and so with deep-seated wrath resolved not to go in then his father came out and began to plead with him so this is like we see at the the parable of the wedding feast where the older ones the ones who were invited first they were too busy with worldly things or their lives or whatever and in this situation the older brother is angry jealous you know upset that his brother's getting this great welcome home when he had done all these bad things but that's the wrong attitude to have. And the father had pleaded with him, but the son answered his father, Lo, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me so much as a little kid or goat that I might revel and feast and be happy and make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours arrived, who has devoured your living with immoral women, you have killed for him that wheat fattened calf and the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But it was fitting to make merry, to revel and feast and rejoice, for this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost, but now he's found. Can you imagine how happy the father is? And I'm sure there's a mom in that house because there's no one born on this earth doesn't have a mom so i'm sure there was a happy mom there too and you know for them to be the brother to be so upset he's ruining this joyous momentous time that he could be you know having a um having an enjoyable time too that we could all get along that we could all rejoice when we come in that yes the this brother this younger brother had done all these terrible things but he had repented 
And we have to forgive one another. We have to forgive because Yahuwah won't forgive us if we don't forgive one another. And this elder brother, he's not coming in. He's spotted and wrinkled. His garment is wrong. It's not the right garment of repentance and forgiveness and laying aside all the the lower level dark, dark energies and dark thoughts toward one another, but rising, you know, there's a highway for the remnant of Yahuwah's people and no evil or darkness walks upon that highway. That's a higher way of thinking, a higher way of being. And it's, it's a loving way. It's a healing way. It brings health and healing to our bodies to, to be loving toward one another, to understand that our Heavenly Father has instructions and they are for our good. They are to keep us safe from harm, for protection from the worldly things and the destruction coming upon this earth. And so I just pray that everyone who hears this, that you understand how important you are, that how he rejoices over you, how the whole heavens rejoice over you, one person repenting and desiring to do the will of the Father, being filled with his Ruach HaKodesh, his heart, his life, the presence of our Creator within us, that this is such a beautiful picture of reconciliation, restoration within us, healing us of all the curses, and, you know, healing us of everything, because we... It's just such an amazing journey. I don't understand how people turn away from it. This is a love story, reconciling us back to that garden. And, you know, reconciling mankind back into the garden, back into that place of beautiful fellowship in the cool of the day and walking and talking with our creator and being back in that spiritual place. And we get a taste of it because our Messiah said, I came to give you life and give it more abundantly. I came to give you this life and give it more abundantly to restore all those things that have been taken from us by the enemy. Restore the years the locust stole because now we get to be in the Father's house under his protection, under his covering, under his love. And he rejoices and the whole heavens rejoice. And it doesn't say... In this, in the scriptures, whether the brother decided to join in or not. And that's for each uh, person to decide whether they're going to join in or whether they're going to be um, angry and jealous of the other ones, or if they're just going to be loving and understand that as long as we all are brothers and sisters obeying the commandments and growing in the Torah and spirit and truth, and we follow our Messiah wherever he goes, we're brothers and sisters, and we have to get along. And it's a beautiful picture of how much we're loved, how much you're loved and appreciated and rejoiced over. And so I think I have another in Romans. Yeah, let's read Romans. Um, let's see, Romans eight thirty-seven. 37. Or this will start at 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? Shall trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of Yahuwah that is in Hamashiach, Yahushua. Well, brothers and sisters, this has probably been long enough. Yes, I have gone quite long again. I just hope you have a beautiful day. Don't get disillusioned by people. It, they can be serpents in the garden who are trying to separate you from the love of our creator. You are good enough. You are loved. You are appreciated by him. And he's, he rejoices and the heavens rejoice over one lost that's found. May we all return to our father's home and his protection and overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Have a great day, brothers and sisters. And I will catch you on the next one, y'all willing.